I have this key. Like many of you around the room, you have a similar key. But this is my key. Your key, like mine, opens the door to your home, where you can enjoy your space, your kitchen, your bedroom. I believe this key is a right. I believe that this key can solve homelessness. Far too many in Ottawa live at motels or at shelters. If you live at a motel, you didn't have a choice to live there. I'm compelled to speak up for those without a voice who are desperately awaiting for a key to their home. As Canada's capital city, Ottawa is faced with many challenges when it comes to poverty, criminality, and housing affordability. Close to 2,000 residents every night sleep in motels and hotels. Many will be staying in these conditions for months to years. I represent three distinct neighborhoods, Lower Town, Sandy Hill, and Vanier, where the three large shelters, as well as the majority of family motel rooms, are used by the city. I believe the city can do much better, and that starts with a housing vision. Last year, the city spent $30 million to ensure people didn't sleep on our streets. Don't get me wrong, I'm not asking us to abandon the current model, but is setting the goal of simply having people not sleeping on the streets enough? I believe in a transformative vision that is at the tips of our fingers, and it starts with believing in the power of the key. But what is homelessness? Many of you will have this image of a single man, single woman, sleeping on the side of a building in the city's core. That might fit the typical definition, but being homeless is much broader. If I live at a shelter, I am homeless. I don't have my key to my own unit. As you can see by the graph behind me, the shelter use is worrisome as we keep doing the same thing over and over and our costs keep increasing of an outdated model. Ottawa is a well-off city. We have low unemployment rate, good support services. The average household income is quite high. And we rank in the world's top cities for our quality of life. Yet some are poor, and the way we plan to help them is by putting them in temporary shelters and motels. The key is an afterthought. Yet, to open that door, you need that key. Let me give you an example. If I go to the doctors and the doctor gives me a prescription, then I go to the pharmacy, imagine if I didn't know when I could get that medication. It's a bit like giving you a cast for a foot when all you needed was a good pair of shoes. I met with a young mom of three kids under the age of 10. Upon her arrival in Ottawa, the city put her up in a motel. She was quite happy at the beginning because it was quick, she needed emergency accommodation. However, a year after, still living at that motel, she felt abandoned. Living in a small space with two bedrooms, a small bathroom, no kitchen. That wasn't a place she could call home. The city spent $110 a night to pay for the owner of that motel for her to be able to stay in that unit. That's $3,300 a month for this one family to live in temporary accommodations. In 2018, we had close to 330 families living at motels in temporary accommodation, and that cost the city close to $16 million. That's $1.6 million for temporary accommodations. In Ottawa, a one-bedroom is around $1,500. A three-bedroom is around $2,100, according to Padmapper, a popular website. Imagine if we had given our trust and our rent to that mom, how quickly she could have lived, her and her family could have lived a normal life. Giving her $2,100 would have meant she could have found rental accommodations. But here's the challenge. In Ottawa, we have low vacancy. 
I met with a student recently who was living for the first time out of the university campus. And the student was sharing with me how hard it was to find a rental unit. Well, that's because in Ottawa, the rental rates have been near zero over the last 10 years. Your options are limited. You either go with the slumlord or you pay very expensive price for a decent unit. Low vacancy, low inventory, low capacity also means less affordability. Many of us think that putting more money will solve homelessness. I challenge that assumption by saying that new money on old models will replicate the same challenges. It's like building more lanes for roads and highways than when there's congestions. We know it doesn't work, yet we keep doing the same thing over and over. Let's take a look around the world. In Austria, close to 70% of residents rent. In their capital city, Vienna, 80% of people rent. And of those 80%, 50% live in public housing. Okay, I know what you're thinking. But let's take a look closer to home. Not too far from here, in Montreal. Last year, 11,000 new units were built in Montreal. The majority are rental units. La majorité des Montréalais louent. 63% of Montrealers rent. Home ownership is at odds with the goals that we have as a society in accessing stable, affordable, and high-quality housing. Here's a snapshot in Ottawa. The majority own, according to the 2016 census, less than 35% of residents rent. Low vacancy, as you saw, and it's expensive. In 2018, in Ottawa, 6,202 units were built. 15, that's 1,5%, were for rental. Ottawa's largest landlord is a public landlord. I happen to be the chair of that organization. That's Ottawa Community Housing. We have 15,000 units. But to access those units, we have a waiting list of 10,000. Imagine 10,000 residents in Ottawa meet the financial income levels to access public housing. Fundamentally, what's so different from owning a key to renting a key? Like me, I know you care. We want our governments to help our most vulnerable. And at the same time, we want our tax dollars to be invested with impact. But as you can see, keeping someone on the streets, being homeless, is expensive. From ambulance services, to hospital stays, to police responses, to shelter use, the costs and efforts keep increasing. But the funding models are set up so that no one sleeps on the street. A professor from the University of Ottawa, Tim Obrey, in 2014, his research team completed research and showed how expensive this model was, or this model is. Their findings is important. Housing first works, giving hope and stability by providing a key to a unit. A key gives hope. More keys, more housing. More housing, more affordability. They're all interlinked. We don't want people on the streets, so we need more keys. But to have more keys, we need vacancies. Well, here's the business challenge. You buy the land, you pay to build, you sell the units, you make your money. Okay, that works when you're selling. But when you're renting, you have the same process, same cost, yet you're making your revenue, your 7%, for the next 30 years. When was the last time you looked at your investment portfolio in 30 years? Outlook. The opportunity is that we can build, developers can build units. Pension funds who are looking for that stable revenue source can benefit from those private portfolios. The key is housing. The key to unlocking housing is vacancies. Yet I keep scratching my head. Why are governments so focused on home ownership? We all understand that governments need to generate money generate revenue from property tax, income tax, from sales tax, to offer services to all of us. Sure, the real estate sector continues to do really well and continues to increase. But imagine how we can change the landscape in Ottawa if we were to build more rental units on public lands. If the private and public sector would collaborate to build more rental housing. 
we could unleash the potential of diverse income communities. We could offer a spectrum of responses to homelessness. We could quickly house those families living at temporary shelters and motels. We can think of homelessness differently and proposing homelessness solutions by unlocking the potential. Only with a key can you unlock. We can solve homelessness by modernizing our housing approach. I want to put a key in everyone's hands, ensuring that everyone has a home, a kitchen, a key to open the door. Thank you.